this project, um, we call it FMTM, Field Mapping Tasking Manager is too many letters. So I call it FMTM all the time. And that's kind of how we reference it. Um, and so basically, um, this is a tool that we developed at HOT very, very recently for um, large scale field mapping campaigns. It was initially deployed for the Turkey earthquake. Um, and we used it in a couple other uh, countries since and stuff like that. Um, this is in Africa, obviously. So basically, it's a tool for organizing large scale campaigns. So what we did is um, we put a tasking manager interface. I assume most people know what the hot tasking manager is. So we built one that we can use for coordinating field mapping campaigns. And so the organizational part's great if you're a project manager, but one of the things we've also discovered is we collect a lot of field data that never goes into OSM because editing it from open data, getting a lot of other stuff is boring and tedious. And so the idea was not only to organize it for project managers, to make sure that the data that we can collect can be efficiently processed and uploaded to OpenStreetMap with good validation because we don't want to pollute the map. Um, and so a lot of the problems with large scale field mapping, I call this like herding cats typical engineering manager stuff and things like that. And so one of the problems is you train 40 college students in the morning and you're going to send them out to go map like Zanzibar um, and stuff like that. So people overlap, they collect duplicate data in the same area, they miss complete areas, you know, they may walk way out of their area because you're usually focusing on a specific area for things. We use Open Data Kit a lot. So I don't know if anybody, anybody here is Open Data Kit? Three people, all right. So basically, Open Data Kit uses these things called SLX forms, and most of the XLS forms we've been using were incredibly poorly designed, really, really inefficient. Like you'd have a form for everything you ever wanted to know about a building. And so why am I answering what the cuisine is for the restaurant when it's actually a hospital emergency room? And so we've worked a lot on really efficient data entry as well. And then, of course, the key part is making sure we can take that data and get it in the open street map um, with good quality. So the... This project is kind of funny. This, there's actually two projects that became FMTM. So the original project actually predates um, actually me working at, I don't know if anybody saw my talk last year on OpenStreetMap for firefighting. I had one slide that talked about homegrown software. This is the homegrown software. And so part of the idea was really working initially on improving XLS form design. And then what happened was about last year at this time, the Open Data Kit team added the ability to add a select one from file that, from a GeoJSON file. And so one of the things we wanted to do was use um, ODK Collect for editing existing OpenStreetMap data in the field, um, which actually works surprisingly. Um, part of the problem was we also wanted to test the actual data collection with actual people, like kind of our, our workspace, youth mappers are great um, and stuff. And then a lot of things we needed, really wanted to make sure that the data we collect doesn't just go to the World Bank. We wanted to actually go into OpenStreetMap and stuff like that. Um, and so our initial testing, we started last year. Last year at this time, the uh, testing was, uh, Kristen did a talk at State of the Map in Florence last year that was really good. She talked about the three months of research we did in Africa. We analyzed every mobile app and went through all that other stuff, um, trying to see what's efficient, what's inefficient. Um, so here's our initial testing team. The youth mappers in Stonetown Zanzibar were really, really great. Um, and in addition, they keep giving us translations of some of the apps, which has been really fun. So these folks are really good. The one who stands out in the middle is Kristen. She was the original developer who built our um, proof of concept demo because we needed to kind of show that we the idea of how we were going to build this was going to work um, and stuff like that. And um, she unfortunately went on leave. So... We did a big demo in January with Kristen's proof of concept and everybody at HOT's like, wow, this is awesome. And it was okay. And then the next week, Kristen went on leave and then the Turkey earthquake hit. Suddenly I'm the only developer left. So we're like, oh no, this is a big disaster. Actually, a really big disaster. So our community people put this out on the internet and it actually worked, surprisingly. So we picked up a couple of volunteer developers and, um, and started cranking pretty hard. Um, so part of the initial part was um, I got the bunch of volunteers. We got started. We got up a production server and things like that. Some of this is more on the project and the product, by the way, um, and things like that. Um, and then I convinced Hot to actually scrape together some funding for me to hire a couple of contractors because I'm sorry, it was a solo project. And I am not a full stack developer. I'm a systems engineer. And Hot amazingly agreed to do that in like two days um, and things like that. Um, at the same time, we had a thing called Outreachy, which is a candidate for um, college student interns. So I was going to have them write all the documentation, user manuals, tutorials, and all that other stuff that was interesting. Um, so eventually we contracted with a company in Nepal called Naxa because we knew some of their engineers. 
Um, we actually have a hub office in Kathmandu, so we're pretty up in the Nepali OSM community. And these guys have a lot of open data kit and open street map experience, full stack mobile development. And so we contracted them for three months. Funding ran out two days ago, by the way, um, and stuff like that. And so part of it was an integration with the prior project that I built, which is called OSM Fieldwork. Um, I'm doing a whole workshop on OSM Fieldwork Sunday, so I'm not going to get into a whole lot of discussion, but OSM Fieldwork is a whole pile of utilities for doing field data collection, satellite imagery base maps, conflation with OSM, all sorts of weird little stuff. But that's Sunday's workshop. Um, so here's our FMT in Nepal. So I point this out because the guy who's taller than all of us in the middle, that's Ivan Gayton. So he's a senior advisor at HOT, and he was the one who came up with this project for the FMTN. So when he heard that I had built software that was processing open data kit and turning it into open street map data and conflating, and he goes, that's the piece that I need. And he basically kind of launched this project. And funny enough, he's doing this exact same talk in London right now at the open data kit conference. So what does FMTM do? So basically, we've had really good experience with tasking manager. And so one of the ways of organizing people is giving them a specific area to map. And so we have a tasking manager like interface We'll do some boring screenshots in a little bit. Um, and the idea is that each mapper only has their specific area. The other nice cool part is that they don't have a custom X form. X forms are the output file format for OD Collect just for their little area. And they have a data extract from OpenStreetMap, you know, building centroids, amenities, healthcare facilities, you know, whatever it was that they want like that. Um, and so, and then the idea is that what we can do is we can actually load that into ODK Collect and edit the data. So maybe, you know, OpenStreetMap says, oh, this restaurant sells Mexican food and here's what it's called. And well, pandemic two years later, now it's a new restaurant that serves different food and I can actually edit it in ODK Collect, which is kind of cool. Editing is different than adding POIs. Adding POIs is easy, but editing existing data is not. And Vespucci is nice if you actually have a lot of experience. Um, and then that's the other thing is then we wanted to collect all the data since we have a data extract with existing OSM so that the tags that we have changed and added get conflated with existing data and then uploaded. Um, and it actually works. Um, so it uses Open Data Kit really, really heavily. Open Data Kit is um, an XML-based format for data collection. It's used by 20 or 30 different apps, both commercial and open source. Um, and we're big fans of it because um, we can do kind of custom data forms. Um, we use OD Collect on the server side, which is another open data kit thing like that. But that's where all of our files and extracts and all the data file management lives. Um, we built a fast API backend on top of my OSM Fieldwork project. That was interesting. Um, and then we dropped the demo project, which was designed to be a demo, and we wrote a full-based React-based front end. Um, and then the backend component also runs fully standalone and fully offline, since we work offline a lot, but that's Sunday's workshop. And I'll come to that if you're really interested about open data kit junk. So, Here's more of the project stuff. So basically, initially you wanna create a project. And so one of the things you'll notice, there's an open data kit server in here. In the beginning, we embedded the open data kit central within the project, but we realized that all of our offices run their own ODK central server. So we decided to make it flexible so people could pick whatever server they wanted for, for where all the data gets uploaded to basically, and you download your forms from and things like that. Um, obviously you have to put in all your authentication stuff, a boring description, that one's really boring and things. Um, once I've created projects, it's kind of that simple, looks like tasking manager type interface. I mean, this is off my laptop, so this is kind of boring, but you have a bunch of projects there and you can pick them and stuff like that. Um, here's where it gets into the fun part. So what we do is when we upload the POI, we want to generate, you know, the squares. Now, the existing tasking manager actually only generates squares. But what we also do is um, we've developed software that actually does task fitting based on features, railroads, waterways, highways. So we get these really wild, really exotic looking task polygon boundaries sometimes. But sometimes that's really nice because some areas have a lot of buildings and some don't and things like that. So you want to update that. So, um, but we also do, do things by default. So you can see in the little menu, we by default, you can divide by squares, you can upload your GeoJSON file, or you can split by features in existing OSM. I'm kind of still working on the last details of that little bit like that. Um, and then, yeah, like, so if we split in tasks, we also want to migrate. Well, this task has got three buildings and this one's got 300. So we'll split the 300 task into a smaller so that we now have two tasks with 150 buildings. Um, it's a really complicated algorithm, but it's kind of interesting, fun. Um, and then basically it looks like this. So here I just split by squares. So here it's pretty simple. Um, I can put in how many meters 
I'm on for each square. I can click generate tasks. If I don't like it, I can change the number and keep regenerating tasks until I like the size of my task squares. And then basically um, keep going. This is uh, the polygon of Katmandu, which is where we're doing a lot of our other testing and stuff like that. Um, then the fun part is it starts cranking like a maniac generating files. So one of the things is we have a single XLS form that kind of comes from a, a library that we've developed for humanitarian mapping. And so we, we modify a couple of the fields in the XLS form so it's specific to just that small task of a few hundred, few thousand meters or whatever like that. We also have a data extract that is only for that particular task boundary as well. And, um, and then we can pick a category. So our categories are buildings, healthcare facilities, water points, waste distribution, humanitarian gunk. I have some really fun stuff in the, in the library, like cap, camping spots and hot springs. Yeah. That's another talk. Um, I map a lot of campsites and things like that. Um, this is kind of corny. This project did not exist three months ago. So the user interface is a little crude still. Um, code donations would be appreciated. And so basically it starts generating all these files, one for every task, and then uploading them to ODK Central. We wrote an entire remote um, client for ODK Central so that we have full control by remote control. And we actually don't run the ODK Central front end anymore. We just run the back end because it's kind of for us just like the, the file server. But right now, because we're still debugging the software, um, I hate to say this, I like to watch all the debugging scroll by so I can catch bugs really quick and fix them. This is go go away pretty soon to a slider. Um, and it can take 10 minutes to generate all the data extracts, but there's still a lot of huge room for improvement on performance. Um, so the other fun thing for anybody who uses ODK Central is you can actually specify a specific task to a specific app user, so that's all they get. And so we also do this fully automatically. And so as we create each task, we then give that mapper and that data extract and that XLS form just access to that one task. So here's kind of that slice of everybody getting assigned tasks, and that's how we control it. You can also give a mapper multiple tasks. Some areas your tasks are small, so you give the mapper four or five tasks so that they don't like be finished by lunch, which has happened to us in the past. Um, this is another weird key detail. So once you've got all that selected, you then go select a task, just exactly like you know our current hot tasking manager. So basically, um, there's one of the more fun multi-polygon kind of project boundaries and stuff. You know, and I selected a task. Um, I did pop up the legend so you can kind of see what's going on, very much like existing tasking manager. Um, and then when you select your task, you get a QR code. So for ODK Central, the QR code is kind of the it does all the setup of your mobile app. So it gives you all your authentication stuff, the X form and the data extracts. So you snap that with ODK collecting that QR code, everything is on your phone ready to go map. You don't even have to log into anything. And it, it just basically worked. That was a lot of work. Um, the other thing this project does um, is we generate imagery-based maps. A lot of areas um, don't have very, very good data. And so having satellite imagery base maps is really, really useful because I'm standing in front of a building that's not there at all. So I want to add it and stuff. Um, we use open aerial map. In Turkey, we did base maps for all of the impact areas for the Turkey earthquake. So the next day, when respondents went out in the field, they could see what it looked like now, not pre-earthquake, which is actually really, really useful. And topo maps in the, in the US, um, any TMS URL. Um, real quick, since I only got two minutes left, uh, this is ODK collect on my phone. Each teardrop is a centroid of a building. This is just a building data extract like that. When I touch one of those little, you know, airdrops, I get all the tags. You can see the handful there that I put into it and stuff like that. Um, and then the other nice thing too is since you're pulling the the coordinates out of OSM, you don't have to wait for your GPS to get satellite connections. So it's actually really fast when you're like mapping an entire town. Here's another example of an imagery base map, very, very, you know, kind of useful. Um, and obviously all this stuff works offline. And um, so right here, this is one of our initial field tests last month in Dominican Republic, luckily not a disaster. And this is the first time we actually had a whole group of random people take a quick training class and go map with it. They're very, very ecstatic about how it really organized their mapping work. Um, and then we also can download all the submissions, process them. This page will monitor the mapping progress every few minutes. And so you can actually watch how your mappers are actually mapping and how fast they're going. And, and then, of course, generate um all sorts of statistics. We can also then here we click a button, convert it to OSM XML, and then load it into to JASM and stuff like that. Um, one of the things is we do process the data when we collect the data on like healthcare. Some of the data is not for OSM, so the conversion software puts some things into a private file for like project funders. The rest just goes into OSM. We can fight it against existing data and we upload it. And it 
I can basically collect data for a week and get it up into OpenStreetMap in like 10 minutes, which is amazing. And so our new deployment is this week. I just got the data models yesterday and we're deploying the whole this new project in Rwanda. And for the first time ever, us engineers aren't doing all the data processing and management. We're actually letting somebody else do it. I got my first bug report an hour ago. That's great. Thank you.